In this chapter, we are going to go through the binary values and number systems using computers. The goals of this chapter is to distinguish among the different categories of numbers and being able to convert numbers from base 10 into other bases and vice versa. Also, to see what's the relationship between base 2, 8, and 16, which are powers of 2 and the importance in computer systems. To start with, everybody knows what a natural number is. It's basically zero in any number obtained repeatedly adding one to it. Usually there are positive numbers. On the other end, we have the negative numbers, which are also numbers, whole numbers, but they're less than zero. So basically, integers are made out of natural numbers, the number 0, and negative numbers. And that's what we're going to be dealing with in this chapter. So let's talk about the natural numbers. How many ones are in 943? Well, if you think about it, there is 900 plus 40 plus 3, right? And that's using base 10 system, which is what we have been commonly using uh, when we study math. But then, what does that mean? It means that the 900, it's a 9 in the second position. And the 40 means it's a 4 in the first position. And the 3 is a 3 in the 0 position. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the 2, not the 3. The 2 is in the 0 position. So basically, we, we, we count the positions as position 0, position 1, position 3. And all numbers in base 10 will always use the same digits, which are digits from 0 through 9. That's in base 10. So if we were to represent 943 in base 10, we can see that it's the 9 times the base, which is base 10, to the power of the position of that 9 in the number, in this case, to the square, because it's in the second position. That gives us 9 times 100, which is 900. The 4. The 4 is in the first position. Therefore, we compute it as 4 times the base, in this case 10, to the power of the position, 1. That's 4 times 10, in other words, 40. And then finally, the 3, which is in the 0 position, will be 3 times 10, the base, to the 0. Any number to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, we're talking about 3 times 1, which is 3. We add them all 3, and that gives us that 943 is 943 in base 10. Now, mathematicians are usually interested in formulas, and this would be the formula equivalent to represent any number in any other base. I don't care if you memorize it or not. The idea is for you to be able to interpret the formula and be able to apply to any conversion in any base. So, how about if we talk about the number 6, 442 in base 13? What does that mean? Well, according to the formula, that means that 6, which is in the second position, is 6 times 13, which is the base, to the power of 2. That's 6 times 169, which is 1014. The 4 would be 4 times 13 to the power of 1, which is 4 times 13, which is 52. And then the 2 to the power of 0, 2 times 1 equals 2. So we add all these numbers, and it comes up with 1,068 in base 10. So 642 in base 13 is equal to 1,068 in base 10. They're equivalent. 
So as we can see, decimals, which is base 10, um, have 10 digits, 0 through 9. If we talk about base 2, typically it's called binaries, then they only use two digits, the 0 and the 1. And if you take a look at the representation of a hexadecimal, for instance, since we're running out of digits, that is, numbers used in the Western world, uh, these digits, 0 through 9, are the commonly, one, the commonly used ones in base 10. But if we talk about hexadecimal, which is base 16, we will be running out of digits, and therefore we start using letters. Therefore, A will be the next digit after the 9, and B the digit after the A, etc., etc., until we complete a total of 16 symbols to represent numbers in base 16. In octal, in octal we can use the, the, the uh, symbols 0 through 7. And in binary, as I already said, it will use only two digits, 0 and 1. So basically, the number of digits being used in a base is equal to a total number of digits minus 1 based on the, on the, um, on the fact that all start with 0 all the way to the last value being minus 1 to the value of the base. So let's see how we could convert 10 in base 10 10 in base 8 and 10 in base 16, all numbers to base 10. So 10 in base 10, it's already in base 10, so it's very simple, it's equal to 10. But 10 in base 8 would be 1 times 8, which is the base, to the power of the position, which is position 1, which is equal to 8. And then 0 to I mean, 0 times 8 to the power of 0, 8 being the base and 0 being the position of that 0 and the number. So as we all know, this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 8. So 8 in base 10. So 10 in base 8 is equal to 8 in base 10. And as you can see, you can do all the other conversions and, and see how they're converted from base 10 into other bases. Now, if you're given a number, whatever that base is, that number is, you can actually try to figure out what base can the number belong to. So 122, for instance, it uses digits 1 and 2. So that number is a number in a base at least greater than or equal to zero to 3. Because it uses the digits, it could use the digit 0, 1, and 2. In the case of 198, we can see that the maximum digit being used here is 9. Therefore, the base must be greater than or equal to 10. In the case of 178, same thing. 8 is the maximum digit in this number, and therefore it could be a number represented in any base greater than or equal to 9. This one, G1A4, the maximum digit is G, if we were to use the, as the rest of the digits our alphabet. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's the seventh character in our alphabet plus 0 through 9, that means it's base 17. So this number is represented in a base greater than or equal to 17. So how would we convert a number from a different base into decimal base, in other words, into base 10? Well, as we just saw, for instance, 642 
in base 8, or other words, in octal base, would be equivalent to 6 times 8 to the second power, which is 6 times 64, which is 384. 4 times 8 to the first will be 4 times 8, which is 32. And then 2 times 8 to the 0, which is 1, that's 2 times 1, which is 2. If we add them all up, you come up with 418 in base 10. So 642 in base 8 is equivalent to 418 in base 10. And you can continue with the same method to try to figure out from hexadecimal to decimal or from binary to decimal. Now, how would we do arithmetic? That means addition and subtraction in other bases. Let's pick, for instance, binary. So remember that there are only two digits in binary, 0 and 1. Therefore, 1 plus 1 is not 2. It's actually 0. And you have to carry to the next level of power a 1. So if we were to add 10, 10, 11, 1 plus 10, 0, 1, 0, 11, then we will do 1 plus 1 is 0, and we carry 1. Then 1 times 1 is 0 plus 1 is 1, and we carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0, and we carry 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 1 is 0, and we carry another one. 1 plus 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0, and we carry 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 0 is 1, so it's 1, we don't carry anything. And 1 plus 1 is 0, and we carry 1. So the addition of these two binary numbers will be this one. <laughs> How about subtracting binary numbers? It's the same kind of deal, except that, remember borrowing? To apply the concept here, you will have to be borrowing 2. So let's see how that works. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. But 0 minus 1 cannot be subtracted. Therefore, we have to come to the next level, borrow 1, and we call it a 2. That will be 2 minus 1, 1. This 1 was borrowed, so it became a 0. 0 minus 1 cannot be subtracted. Therefore, we got to be able to borrow from the next one. And the next one cannot borrow because it's a 0. So we have to go to the level above and borrow that one. So we have to cross this 1. That becomes a 0. So now we have a 2 here. And remember, we're borrowing from this level a 1. So we cross the 2 and becomes a 1. And then the 1 that we borrow is a 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So the subtraction of these two binary numbers will be this number. Now, how will we count in binary, octal, hexadecimal, and decimal, which are the most common bases used in computer science? Well, very simple. As you can see, the binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, is the same in all the other bases. There's 0 in octal, 0 in hexadecimal, and 0 in decimal. How about 0, 0, 0, 1 in binary? Well, it's 1 in octal, 1 in hexadecimal, and 1 in decimal. So they're pretty much the same all across. This is where they start being different. And the next counting number. 0, 0, 1, 0 becomes 2 in octal, 2 in hexadecimal, and 2 in decimal. And so it's 1, 1. And so it's 1, 0, 0. And so is 1, 0, 1. All the way to 1, 0, 0, 0. In here, this is the equivalent to 1, 0 in octal. 
but it's still equivalent into 8 in both hexadecimal and decimal. And you, you can start seeing that as soon as you pass the maximum digit in the octal, you start doing, talking about two digit places. Same here for the hexadecimal, which goes all the way to the F. And same here in the decimal. When we run out of digits, then we start getting into the two digit. Well, how about if we do not want to go to base 10, but we want to go directly from a base, from two different bases, different than the decimal. For instance, we want to convert a number from binary to octal. This is where it starts getting really tricky. Because for octal, in binary representation, you need at least three digits. Let's go back for a second into representing the number 8. Or I should say the number 7, which is one value less than the, than the octal. This is the binary, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the octal will be 7. So we need these three digits in the binary to be able to convert to one digit in the octal. So we need these three digits in the binary to convert to one digit in the octal. That means that this sample here, we have to break it into three digits. The 0, 1, 1, the 1, 0, 1, and the 0, 1, 0. So, the 011 is being converted into octal of 3, because this is 2 to the power of 1, and this is 1 to the power of 0. That's a total of 3. In here, this is 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, plus 0, and 1 to the power of 0, that's 1. So that's a 5. 4 plus 1 is a 5. And in here it's a 2. So 10, 10, 10, 11 is 253 in base 8. So the key is to know that if to octal, we have to break it into three digits groups. How about from binary to hexadecimal? In this case, we'll have to break it into four. And the reason being because in order to represent one digit in the hexadecimal, we need four digits in the binary, at least. <coughs> so given that, we break it into two groups, 1010 and 1011. 1011 is a B and 1010 is an A. Therefore, this long binary number is equal to AB in base 16 or hexadecimal. How about from octal to binary? Well, in this case, you just take the digits one by one because it only takes one digit to convert into the binary and you convert each digit into the binary. So 3 becomes 0, 1, 1, 5 becomes 1, 0, 1, and 2 becomes 1, 0. So 253 in base 8 is this long binary number. Same thing from hexadecimal to binary. You just take the A, you convert into the binary and the B into the binary and then put them concatenate them together and that's the equivalent in binary here's a very small algorithm that actually if you walk through it it will convert numbers in base 10 to other bases So let's try it. We want to convert 
188 in base 10 into base 8 or octal. How would you do that? You take the 1988, you divide it by 8, and you come up with 248, and the remainder is 4. That becomes the first digit in the octal. Then you take the 248, you divide it by 8, that it becomes 31, and there's 0 remainder. That becomes the second digit in the octal. Then you take the 31, you divide it by 8, that's a 3, with a remainder 7, and that 7 becomes the third digit in the octal. And then finally, you take the 3, and you divide it by 8, obviously that's a 0, with a remainder 3, and that 3 becomes the fourth and last digit of the octal. So, 1,988 in base 10 is equal to 3,704 in base 8. So what's the importance of binary numbers? The importance is that computers have storage units called binary digits or bits. And basically since computers are electrical machines or electronic machines, they can only work with high voltage or low voltage, what is typically called the on and off switches. So binaries is a perfect base to use to represent numbers in a computer. That means that all bits have zeros or ones in a computer. Now, Throughout history, computer scientists have grouped together 8 bits so they could represent a big number. And this 8 bits, they call it a byte, and typically can represent up to a number of 200, from 0 to 254. I'm sorry, 255. Now, the number of bits can vary according to the machine. If the machine communicates with its memory through 4 bytes, which is the equivalent of 32 bits, then what it's, called, it's what it's typically called a 32-bit machine. So all laptops that used to run Windows XP, for instance, are considered 32-bit machines. So they use 4 bytes to address or represent numbers. Nowadays, it's very common to use machines that use the 64-bit address, which is a lot more. This is probably the first computer, the Abacus, used in the Middle East. Then this is an example of one of the early IBM computers. And um, I think that this is pretty much all the material that I want to cover for this chapter. So I hope you do a lot of exercises of conversions between different bases because that's what it's going to be in the quiz. Bye-bye.